my side, we are in our Monday night shiur. The name. Our shiur is, uh, excuse me, Ari, uh, Ariel. Oh, Ariel. He made me crazy with the whole virtual reality thing. Uh, Abraham. Our shiur is Lerfuash Lemat. Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa Shoshana and also Leilun Nishmat Amalia Bat Thelma Tufaha Yes Leilun Nishmat Haim Shalom Ben Nikadam We are sure tonight we wrote in our uh, in the heading Tzniut in the Torah Now the shiur I'll be honest with you, most of the shiur tonight has to be said mostly to a woman. You tell the message. You don't have to tell them, you have to share the link. It's not gonna sound the same from you or from the, from the video, from the audio. But the concept of tzni'ut in the Torah is a very important concept. I'm just gonna, in, in general, I'm gonna say that in the alphabet, the aleph bet, we see a very interesting uh, anomaly. There are letters that you spell them differently when they come at the end of the word. And those are the letters that we call mansapak. Right? We even have a special minhag on the last day of Sukkot that take five aravot. In Hoshan Arabah, and at the end of Hoshan Arabah, we take these five Arabot and we smack them on the ground. And each smack, five smacks we do, we say it's Minhad Nevi'im, the tradition of prophets. And each smack is corresponding to one letter of the Mansafach Mem Nun Sadik Pei Chaf. And we, they're all in the Sofits. Right? Each one has a regular letter and it has a sofit letter, right? So you have two forms of these letters. You have it like this. That's called mansapah shutim, right? Like this. Regular, in the middle of the word, in the beginning of the word. Then you have them at the end of the word, like this. Man, sa, pa, right? That's at the end of the word, right? Says the Ariya Kadosh, and he gets this from the Zohar, obviously, that these letters have a special property to them. When these letters are found in a name or in a word, at the end of a word especially, they correspond to Gvurot. That word has a lot of vura. These five letters have a lot of judgment in them. When you have them in a word. In a word. Which way judgment? In every way possible. Now the question is, is it only when they're found in their end way? Or also even in their regular way? Yeah? According to almost 99.999% of Kabbalists, Lukubalim, only when they're found in the end form do they correspond to Gvura. Gvura means strict judgment. Except for one. And this one, he tilts the whole Moznaim. He's Rabbeinu Harashash. Rabbi Shalom Sharabi. Rabbi Shalom Sharabi says, opposite. These ones, these, they're the world. The first ones. Not these, he writes. And all the Kabbalists, of Eliyahu Manin, Ben Ishkai, they're all fighting to find out where does he have the source of this? Where in the Kiveh Ari? Because it seems like the opposite when they're at the end. You see how they have long legs? Usually when a letter has a long leg, like a kuf, it means death. <coughs> It's going from point A to point B. It's going to an end, right? Ketz. How do you say the end in Hebrew? Ketz. Ketz is kuf, tzadik, right? What do you see the similarity in both letters? They both have long legs as if they're going down to the 
to the klipa. How do you say the first killer in Hebrew? The first killer was who? Kain. Look at his name. Kuf, Yud, and Nun. Combine the Yud with the Nun, what do you get? That's how they get the end. So we see the opposite from what the Rashash says, but the Rashash is so strong that anything he says in the Sephardi world, the Sephardi world, overcomes anything anybody else says. His Kabbalah is so strong, so true, that anything he says is over, it's absolute. I'm not going to explain to you why right now, but I'm just letting you know that every Kabbalah we have, Every meditation we have, every minhag we have for the Sfaradi. It's always Ari according to the Rashash. Always. And there's many Mikubali. For example, there's Baal Shem Tov, Chasidut. There is, for example, Ram Chal. There is the Gra. There is Rav Natan Shapira. There is Rav Meir Papirash. There's ma- many. Rav Yaakov Kopel. There's many different types of Mikubalim who release, who shown their mastery in Kabbalah. But we don't go according to them. Who do we go according to? The Rashash. That's why anytime you have Kabbalah to sweeten the judgment, you'll always have Kabbalah to sweeten which letters? Mansa Baba, which? Like this or like this? The first ones. Where do we have this Kabbalah? The Ari teaches us. The five powers that stop our parnasa, stop our parnasa, our mansapa. These are the five letters that stop our parnasa. From there comes all the judgment. So when you say, for example, poteach et yadecha, poteach et yadecha, one of the kavanot is to bring the shefa down to sweeten these five letters. These five letters. How? Open up Abu Lach Hakodesh. Regular Abu Lach Hakodesh is over there. It's over there. When you say Lechol Chai Ratzon, it's over there. I'm not gonna get. We're not. It's not a shiur and uh, a parnasa. Now I'm gonna teach you now something amazing. Any word that you have, these five letters, or any one of these five letters, it shows what? Excuse me. It shows what? Dinim <coughs> Kashim. Let's take the word of our shiur today. Tzni'ut. Tzad. Right away in the beginning, what do you have? Tzad. So the name itself denotes what? The word itself is what? Dinim kashim. It's in the beginning of a word, also tzadik. Tzadik. It's hard to be a tzadik. Is it easy to be a tzadik? The Imkashim, person who wants to be a tzaddik, right away, everybody is against him. You're a fanatic, you're crazy, you don't want to eat meat, you don't want to eat this chicken, you don't want to go to this wedding, what's wrong with you? A rabbi is officiating it, you're waking up too early in the morning, you're staying up too late at night learning Torah, you're crazy, right? The usual. Mishigas, your haircut changed, you're a mishuga. So, the letter tzaddik is in the beginning, you know right away what do you have there? Dinim? What's the next letter? No. Nun! Even worse. Even worse! Nun Sofit, the nun denotes something that can never be revealed. 50 gates of Bina. Tseniut. Tseniut. And so the nun is also Dim Kashe. So that means it's Tseniut is very hard. So you have tzaddik nun yud. Ayin, Vav, Tuf. And in general, Tuf is what? It's the last letter. Also, Din Kashir. Ayin. What's Ayin? Where does all the Avonot come from? The Ayin Ayin. Ev, Tsini'ut is what? From the? Lo, Taturu, Acharei, Levavchem, Acharei, Einichem, Asher, Atem, Zonim, Acharei. Everything comes from the Ayin Ayin. It's such a hard letter, the letter Ayin. For example, the name Immanuel. It starts with the letter Ayin. Ayin. It's a name Kashe. It's a very hard name. That's why the Yoshka people, what did they what did they choose the name of their God to be? From the Torah? Immanuel. Yes. That's what they chose their name in Yeshaya. It says over there, Immanuel. They said this is the name of Yoshka. It's such a tough name, that letter Ayin, that uh, that the that the that the ever that the ever 
the, the, the limb, the, the organ that's corresponding to the letter is named after the letter. Ayin. All the Averot start with the Ayin. Okay? So Tzni'ut, we already... We already established Dinim Kashi. It's very hard out there. It's very hard. And I'm gonna repeat to you, our shiur today is really for women, it's not for men. There is Tzni'ut by men too. There's also Tzni'ut by men. There is. But mostly the Tzni'ut Bechitzoniyut. On the outside, deal with women and not to men. There's laws of Tzni'ut by Tila, for example. Did you guys know if you're praying at home? You didn't make Minyan. You're praying Marav at home. You have to wear your shoes when you daven. You can't daven without your shoes on. What about slippers? Even with slippers, that's already Badi Avad. Lechatchila, you have to wear your shoes. You must. You're gonna go in front of a king with your slippers? Would you go in front of the president with your slippers? Even Joe Biden, would you go in front of him with slippers? Even Joe Biden! No, you go in front of him with shoes, trust me. Even him, you'd go in front of him with shoes. Oh, he might fall. <laughs> <laughs> he wears slippers. He might trip. <laughs> no, it's uh, so it's uh, you're not allowed to make fun of a king. No, you know, he, he is. You have to make a bracha when you see him. What? Absolutely, yeah. He's a president of the superpower of the world. Believe it or not, you can press the nuclear bomb and you could. Uh... <laughs> he doesn't know what that is. It's already a different question. That's not our problem. At the end of the day. Allah al tikalel melech. It says in the Shalom Right? To be very careful, but. In the, in, in it for a man, it's also tzniut. I, I told you guys a story on Shabbat. I was once in a shiur. A guy was fit and nice. He bent down and the whole Grand Canyon was showing over there. What was he trying to show over there? I don't know. A peach? What is it? Yes, it's not tzniut. It's not tzniut. Right? <laughs> in general, tzniut is for women. Why? I'm going to read you a Kafa Chaim. The Kafa Chaim has a big cash. Oh, it's Shukhan Aruf's question. Person is running late to work. And, or he's running late to his test. He's on the train. Zman Kriya Shema. <clears throat> on the train, we know Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Porat Ale I haven't been on a train in years. But since I've been on the trains, I remember what used to go on over there. And it's not the most snewed place. A lot of shtiot go on over there. A lot of things. There is like this, there is like that, but definitely there's a lot of shtiot over there. And you want to say shema, and in front of you, it's something erva, something that's not tzalua. Are you allowed to say shema? The, the Shulchan Aruch deals with the case, let's say, forget about the body, just the hair is showing. Mm. Just the hair. Of a Jew or a goy? A goy, even. Even a goy. I love it. Huh? So says there is a Zohar that says there are five ervas in Aisha. Five. These five correspond to the five letters of Mansapach. There is Se'ar Baisha Erva. I'm not going to make a mistake. There is Kol Baisha Erva. What? Voice. There is Yad Baisha Erva. Her hand. There is shok ba'ishayerva, the thigh. Then there is regel ba'ishayerva. I did all five? Legs. Yeah, right. yeah? All five? The regel. That means in the regel, <coughs> the leg, the Zohar, it says in Idra Rabba, we read this in the night of Shavuot. The Zohar counts five ervas in Aisha. That means five things that reveal the Mansabach. If you look at these five things, what are you really looking at? Negative. The negativity of the mansapa. So what are you really drawing right now? Mansapa, tum'ah, not tum'ah, dinim. When you use it for the wrong, that means when you see the din, and then you start thinking about it, that's tum'ah already. How about non Yeah, is it? So you get affected? Uh, <clears throat> if you get affected is, obviously, anything you come into contact with, you get affected, infected. I'm talking about a creature, man. Can you say Shema in front of that? No. Can you say Shema? No. Says the Shulchan Aruch. So let's 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 just there's Man Tzapach here. Yeah? Man Tzapach. 
The man is the se'ar. That's the hair. Yeah. Hair. That's why women have to cover the their hair. Right? I'm just going to read you the Zohar regarding women covering their hair. The Zohar in Parashat Naso says, I just want to give a disclaimer before this viewer. I know this viewer is mostly for women. But whoever listens to this, it's a very hard to beat Tanu 100% today because as the Yaskil Avdi says, it just became such, even in the religious world, everything became mutat. And I was, I was preparing this viewer today. It just took me one hour to get through the sugiya of Se'ar Ba'isha'ira. And I was preparing to you the whole thing. I, I, I can't prepare this whole thing for you guys. It's just too much. You understand? It's just a lot of information. So, first of all, I want to say to Akadosh Baruch Hu, we're not giving deen on anybody. We're not here to give deen on anybody. We're here to learn. Number one, ignorance is the first step of foolishness. We're here not to be ignorant. Number two, if we fell in one of these Averod, we're not passing judgment on ourselves. Because we're human beings and we're not malachim. But we're here to learn. It's very important because the Baal Shem Tov says they don't judge you in Shamayim until you judge yourself. Mm. So we're not judging anybody. We're not judging ourselves. We're just here to learn. To learn. That's it. And to become better Jews. Jews. It says in the Zohar and Parashat Naso, look what it says. The Zohar was very machmir that a hair should not be outside a woman's kisuya rosh. Why? That's the Lashon. Amar Rabbi Chizkiya. Rabbi Chizkiya said, Klala ve'onesh. There should be a curse and a punishment. You know, we all say with Zohar, 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 Zohar. But we also don't know the rest of the, of the Zohars. Zohar, last week's parasha. Klala ve'onesh lete alahu barnash de shavak le'im tate de tekseh misara de reshe devar. Cursed on that man that he allows his woman to go outside with her hair uncovered. I'm just talking about the men. That's the easiest of the manzapach. It's just the first letter. It's not even the rest of the manzapach. Just the beginning of the manzapach. Vedau chad minun tzni'ut adebeita. This is one of the fundamentals of tzni'ut, says the Zohar in Asso. Ve'iteta afikat misara dereishel avar. Garim miskinut alebeta. I'm not going to finish the Zohar. Who, a woman who allows herself to show her hair outside causes poorness, poorness, poverty to one's house. This is the words of the Zohar Akadosh. That means for every hair that's showing out, it's every se'ar be'isha erva, every mem, which is the mansapa, and every man that looks at it, he draws from her energy. That energy was supposed to be for who? Husband. Her husband. And we also know from the Gemara, in a couple of places it says, whoever wants to be rich, says Rava, give your wife attention. Give your wife presence. That means we have to give her manzapach bigger energy. Because the energy of money comes through her. It comes through her. But since you're not using it for yourself and you're using it and it's being used for somebody else, where does it go to? Somebody else. And what are you left with? Nothing. Nothing. So the Zohar Kadosh says that a person that allows his wife to be se'ar be'isha irva, he, lo- he becomes a miskan. A miskan. Okay? That's one kafachayim Kadosh. Now, what is the power of tzniyut? What's the power of tzniyut? Now, it's a lot. I'm, I'm telling you, don't pass it from what I'm saying. Don't try to come to any maskan. There's so much to speak about this. It's crazy. I just opened a book about this. Just 50 sources was just on the first thing. And every source you have to open up. And no AI could do this for you, by the way. I tried. Right. Trust me, all Sunday I was trying. It doesn't do it for you. One siman in the Shulchan Aruch, I tried to make it do for me. One siman, it didn't do it for me. Did you do the kosher one? I did not do the kosher one. But there's a kosher one now. Ben Porati said. All right, send me a look. Let's try the kosher one right now. All right. I want to tell you what's the power of tzniyut. Anybody here could tell me from the Torah who got the power 
of being a king because of Tzniut. Shaul HaMelech, thank you very much. He got the Jewish trivia for the night. Shaul HaMelech was Zochef for Tzniut. Who's supposed to be the king of Am Yisrael? David. David, David's the lion. Yehuda, Judah's supposed to be the king. He was not the king. He was not the king. In fact, we see by David the opposite of Tzniut. Why? The only time in the Torah where we see a girl is in love with a guy is by David. We never know by David, by David himself. Michal, Michal was in love with David. It doesn't say that by any other uh, character in the whole Torah, ever. It's always the guy that goes after the girl. He can di- no. It doesn't say that by Yosef. That was, she was a klipa. We're not counting that one. No, we're talking about the show. Okay. We're not talking about Klippot over here. She was thinking about something else. We're not, she wasn't thinking about Kedusha. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, for the Midrash, she saw the, she was an astrologist. She played with horoscopes. Who cares about that? Mrs. Zulicha. Zulaycha. Yeah. But by Shaul, we see he was Zoche. He was Zoche to Melucha because of Tzniut. Says the Ari, anybody who has the Mida of Tzniut, modesty, he has the power to be a king. Even though he's not worthy from his genealogy to be a king, because he has the power of modesty, he will be a king. And any woman who has the power of being modest, she will be zoche to have kids who are in the position of kings, leaders. And the famous uh, um, uh, example, the Gemara brings a woman called Kimchit, that she saw seven children that were Kohanim Gdolim. Kimchi, that was her name. Kimchi, from the word Kemach. 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 Kimchi? Not Kimchi, that's Korean. Kimchi uh, is a uh, Kemach. Flower. Flower. Parnasa. What happened? I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to explain you now why, in the root of the world, whoever is modest is Zochel Melucha. Modesty doesn't just mean you cover it up, modesty also means. If somebody tells you a secret, you're able to hold it in. It's very hard today. Everybody shares all the videos and all the Instagrams and all the links and all that. It's very hard. It's also modesty. Modesty is also when a person goes to parties to be modest. Modesty, that's why the Gemara says, better to go to a Yushvo than to go to a wedding. I'm serious. So the Gemara says, Tov I'm gonna tell you now a secret of secrets. Whoever is okay to hear this tonight, Zakha. And I'm only saying this. I've said it before in my shiri for sure. I'm already seeing many people are starting to speak about this. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. It's called Shbirata Kelim, the breaking of the vessels. I've spoken about this before. But since I see it's already becoming a hot topic amongst many, many people, I'm going to speak about it in depth right now in my regular issue. Usually it's been Shari Ora, so Hayim, I used to speak about it, now did you, and in Shabbat I speak about it. When Hashem created the world, if He would create the world straight, Him and this world, the world would blow up in a second. It would just revert back to its source. Because you have the source and you have the tipa. What's the tipa? Us. The us. The, 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 the drop. What happens when you put a flame next to a bowl of fire? What does it want to do? It wants to go back. What happened in Har Sinai? We all dropped dead. Twice. 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 If we were Abraham, if we were Moshe Rabbeinu, if we were Moshe Rabbeinu, it was a different story. Yeah, we could hold ourselves. Moshe Rabbeinu was used to it. Also, we said short nishmat. That means, Nachshon ben Aminadab, did he drop dead? Yes. yes. Netanel ben Suar. Yes. Yes. Yoshua bin Nun. Yes. Only one who didn't? Moshe Rabbi. Okay. Are we Moshe? I don't know so. Everyone. Everyone. The all the Nishamod left them? Came back. Only Moshe Avdi. So, Hashem decided, and he knew Bechokhmato, obviously, that we cannot understand this Chokhmah. To create this world, we need veils. Filters. Filters. I like that word. Baruch Hashem for our generation. We need filters. How many filters do we need? Ten. Ten. Everything in this world, pay attention, is what? Ten. But how many days of the week are there? Seven. Seven. Do you know that the fact that there are seven days of the week doesn't make sense mathematically? 
if we count from the year and from the month, seven days doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be a different number. Ancient Mayans, for example, didn't have seven days in a week. They had 10? I think they had 10. But in general, the number seven, for some reason, the whole world accepts it. You go to Zimbabwe, how many days of the week are there? Yeah. Seven. You go to uh, Taiwan, China seven. Ch uh, Taiwan is, uh, you know, they're going to take them over soon. Uh, you go down to Brazil, South Africa, seven. Why did they count seven days? Anyone here know? For the clean days. For the clean days? <laughs> Don't go too deep. It's like a person tells me, tell, you go to a Fahir, he says, explain me the Gemara, he's explaining Tosfot. I'm just asking you Rashi. Don't get to the Tosfot over here. What's the reason why there are seven days in a week? Why the whole world accepts seven? <laughs> seven days of creation! That's it. Everybody believes in the Torah. Hands down. That's the reason. Everybody believes in the Torah. I'm serious. I'm serious. Everybody believes in the Torah. This rules every religion. This rules every single religion. It's not my thing, by the way. I heard this already a long time ago. But it's a, it's a common fact. Why do you keep seven days a week? Why do you do it? Right? These seven days of the week correspond to the seven powers that God created. That He created them. Seven filters. He created them and destroyed them. I once asked Chad GPT, you, you mentioning it. I asked him, I want to see how smart it was. I asked it, what are the 12 parts of Atsirut? They said it knew everything, I don't know. <laughs> Karoshi, after he sent me that, I sent the message to Chad GPT. You guys need some more configuration. It doesn't know everything, by the way. All right? Don't get too uh, ay, -ay, ay about it. It's only the information that it's fed that it's feeding you. The first vessel that it's that God created was supposed to be the vessel of chesed. chesed. But since God created that filter mixed, mixed with sigim, dirt. You ever see gold when it's when you first uh, clean it? It's very dirty, right? So it had a different name. That name was Yovav. Yovav, the first king of Edom. But well, let's call it chesed, just for uh, argument's sake. The next is gvura. Then comes tif eret. Come on, l'shem, wake up. Then comes what's that? Tif eret, huh? Netzach. The gam netzach Israel lo yishaker. After netzach is hod. Now you can say hod. Then after hod is yesod. And the last one is our favorite, David Amelech, <laughs> Malchul. Yeah, yeah. These are the seven filters that God created. Think about it as seven different lenses. He created to show himself in this world. What happened? When he brought down the light into each one, it was times ten. For argument's sake, times ten. That means it was ten, the light was 10 times the vessel. So what happened to the first vessel? It broke. Then, it went down to the second. Again, times 10, what happened? Broke. broke. No, because some of it went down. Some of it went down. I'm not gonna get too deep into it. You have to learn It went down to Tiferet, what happened? Broke. Netzach, broke. Hod, broke. Yesod, broke. Oh. No, then what yeah. happened? Malchut only had a little bit in it. It wasn't supposed to break. But since Malchut, the Shechina, the female energy is so weak, under pressure, under pressure, when it's alone, what happens to it? It breaks. But says the Ari, something interesting happened. Could you imagine what kind of Eliyahu Anavi you need to teach you such a thing? It's not written anywhere, is what I'm telling you. Not in the Zohar, nowhere. Only Arya Kadosh. When Yesod broke, it saw that the Malchut was about to break. So it decided to go down a part of it with the Malchut inside the vessel. To at least let it rule for a little. That part that went inside the Malchut to let it live for a little bit from the Yesod 
was called Shaul HaMelech. So the Ari says, if he went down to the Malchut, it was such a big light, how come Malchut didn't explode automatically? Because he came down Bitsniut. He came down with modesty. And because he came down with modesty, says the Ari in Otsrot Chaim, he got the kingship. So really, who's supposed to get the kingship? Malchut, David Amelech. But who got it first? Shaul. Because if it wasn't for Shaul in the pre-mortal world, David wouldn't even be alive. He would have been a nephil. You know what a nephil is? A stillborn child. If it wasn't for the life that Shaul gave him, David would have been nothing. If it's not for Mashiach ben Yosef, there will never be a Mashiach ben David. Do you understand the reason why Hashem made the Etz Hadad before the Etz Chaim now? Do you understand how everything is according to plan? How we are according to plan? What, Hashem couldn't just make him eat from Etz Chaim? No! The Malchut needs the Etz Hadad Tov. It needs the Shaul Amel. Did he break eventually? Yes. But did he give enough life for David to bring him back to life? Yes. It's a life to life. That means Sniut is a Midah in the pre-mortal world. It's a first Midah that we see in Otsrat Chaim, by the way. It's the first Midah. Besides for God's mercifulness, it's the first Midah, Sniut. Shaul, Zachar, le I'm going to read to you in Sabinel. Neymar B'Shaul, says the Otsrat Chaim. Nechba el When When Shmuel came to give him the kingship, where was he? He was hiding in the warehouse. That means all the Jews came to the Samuel, Shmuel, and he said, Shmuel and Avi, we want a king. And Shmuel's like, you guys want a king? No problem, I'm a prophet. Let's do this. He gets the prophecy, Shaul HaMelech. Now what's the crazy thing? Shaul is from the Benjaminites. The smallest tribe. His family was the most insignificant family. So he's like, Shaul, now, if you're from the most insignificant family and you're chosen as king, what are you going to do? You're going to go up. That's what's up. What did he do? He was hiding between the wine barrels. Yeah. Don't touch me. And he was very tall, by the way. He could, how could you hide to Shagai? I don't want to be chosen. Says the Ari, Because when the Kelim broke, there was one light that was left. She bichinat harapach mitzotzov from the 288 sparks, one light was left, and that light lechayot et hamalchut to give light to who? To give life to the malchut, the shchinat, the divine presence. Veze who bichinat Shaul Amelech? That's the that's the aspect of Shaul Amelech. That means if anybody over here, all the guys over here, before we get to the tzniut of a woman, the tzniut of a man. If anybody over here wants to reach Melucha, what is Midai supposed to have? Tzinim. If you don't have the Midai of Tzinim, I'm going to tell you even more than that. For all those guys looking for a Sikula for marriage, what's the marriage? What's marriage? I want to ask you. Abraham. What are you trying to reach? Which, what, what, what's Malchut, Malchut. The Malchut. Your wife is the Malchut. So if you want the Malchut, what do you have to be? Sniut. But the guys think opposite. What do you have to be? The opposite of Sniut. But no one you think you have to be. Asus! Where is Abraham? The Susati Brich I have to be a, a Asus. I have to show myself. I have to show my power. I have to show how strong I am. I have to show how amazing I am. How beautiful. How nice I am. But if you're going to do that, you're not going to get a Malchut. You know who you're going to get? Lamed Yud, Lamed Yutab. That's who you're going to get. You're going to get Lamed Yud, Lamed Yutab. She wants the guys who are not Bitsniyut. You want Rachel and Leah? Who are you going to get? Who you have to be? Shaul. How do you like that? Huh? I'm going to tell you something bigger now. First of all, you guys didn't understand what I just said, but whatever. I got it. But let's play blank advocate. 
when God created the Malchut Be'olam Atikun, the Malchut is what letter in God's name? In God's name. Hey! How you? How you? She's the last. The last letter. Hey! 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 You're going to say the last letter. The letter A. Says the Ari. The letter A is really two aspects. There is the revealed aspect. You see this part? And the revealed aspect. Then there is the smaller aspect, it's the hidden aspect. What's the main part? The hidden aspect or the revealed aspect? Whatever is revealed, what do you mean? I'm, I'm looking at you. Right? Don't be Hasidic with me right now. I'm asking you in the letter hey right now. What's the most important aspect? The Dalit or the Wal? The Dalit, obviously. I look at the Dalit. Right? Yes or no? When in Pesach, when I break the two pieces, right? What am I saying? The Dalit. Big, big one. It's supposed to be the big, the Dalit, but the Dalit always comes out bigger. Always. Even though it's supposed to be the opposite. Says the Ari, the Shekhinah, God's divine, the Malchut. There's always a hidden aspect and a revealed aspect. The hidden aspect is called. Our mother, Leah. Leah. The revealed aspect is our mother called Rachel. Rachel. Mama. Mama Rachel. That's why, where is Rachel Imenu buried? In the middle of the road. Yeah. Where is she? Everybody can come see her. Even Arabs go there to pray. You should know that. Even Arabs go there to pray. And when they go in, they take off their shoes. Wow. Even they go over there. Why are they going to Rachel? I don't know what they're doing over there. I'm an expert in the Kritmachs, not in the Arabs. Not yet. The Rachel is Milder. Where is Leah buried? Nobody knows. Inside. She's somewhere inside over there. Who knows where she is? Down in the cave. Why? Al Madid Kasya. Pay attention, guys. In women, women. A person who has kids always sees this in his daughters. There's two kinds of girls he has one that's always an introvert. That's true. One that's always covering herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a Itkasya. She's a Leah. Then there's always the daughter that's the Itgalia. Outside. The Rachel. <laughs> and who does everybody like? Rachel. The Rachel. Everybody loves Rachel. Because everybody wants to enjoy from the Itgalia. What are we always picking up? Rachel. Not Leah. Correct? The Ari compares the two Bechinot of Le'ar and Rachel to Talmud Torah and Tfilah. Tfilah is Beit Galut. It's, it's in the revealed state. You're there, you're davening, you're praying Torah. When you're learning Torah, it's Beit Kasya. You, nobody knows what you're learning. It's all in your Mahshava. Right? Every woman has a Bechinat Le'ah and Bechinat Rachel. If a woman is Bechinat Rachel, she has a very hard tikkun. Because she always wants to reveal herself. She can't help herself. She always wants to show off her mansapach. Because that's her Bechinat. But she doesn't know who does she have to show it to? Her Yaakov. What happens because Rachel always messes up her mansapach? Who ends up taking it? Leah. Leah. That's why in the world right now, what's more stronger, Talmud Torah or Tfilah? For sure Talmud Torah. No? Tfilah. Who davens, I want to know. The faster you daven, the more people you have in show. That's the, that's the truth. There's no scary thing as davening to it. Davening is becoming like a... It, it, it's a mitzvot anashim melumada. Nobody wants to... Da- no, it's becoming like... I got, I have to, it's a chore. I gotta do it. What can I do? I have to do it. It's an avodah. Hashem, itself, Hashem himself calls it an avodah. They say, but Talmud Torah, no. I go, I find the time. I learn in my, in my thing. It's le'ad. Because it kasya. Why? The Bechinat Le'ah, since it's a covered Bechinat, Lo Shalta Be'ayin Hara. There's no Ayin Hara on it. 
בתפילה, since it's been Galia, שלטה בעין הרע. And therefore you see, interestingly speaking, what kind of woman get divorced more easily? Beautiful woman or homely woman? woman. More beautiful woman, why? She's בחינת איתגליה. There is more sucking from the mansapach from her. People take her mansapach and she's left with nothing to give her husband. So therefore the mansapach breaks down right away. She has nothing to give the husband and boom, everything goes. But yet for some reason, the one that's not, uh, that's what's up, she lives a normal life. Why is that? Because her mansapach is not broken. You guys don't understand the power of the A9. She goes to a wedding. Fifty, a hundred men look at her. How many men look at her? For sure, a hundred. Easy. Imagine the the the, the tumah she gets this one night in a wedding. Imagine the bichinav shbira shbira takelim that happens just in one night. It's it's impossible to to even uh, to to weigh it. But on the other hand, somebody that's more chonegi, as they say, more homing, more tsanua, covers the hair, the mansapach is covered, the shok is covered, the yad, the yad is covered, as the zor. It's very hard to break, even if it breaks, if the husband is strong, he'll bring it back. He'll bring it back. Wait a second. Now I'm going to tell you from Yosef. How does he bring it back? How does he bring it back? The only way to bring it back, says the Ari, is through a zivug. What's a zivug? A connection. Only physical? No. Zivug could even be by connecting our eyes together. Right now I'm looking at you. I'm making a zivug. Yeah. It's a zivug. Zivug doesn't have to be something sensual. It could be when I'm speaking to you, teaching you Torah, says the Ari, the Torah of a Rebbe to a Talmud is a bigger zivug than a parent to a child. You understand? Zivugim is all relatively speaking. So a guy, for example, he's old. He can't have a zivug with his wife anymore. It doesn't, it's done. And my Rebbe once taught me that the, the Mekubalim, uh, the old Mekubalim used to have a zivug with their wife just by looking at them. It was enough. It was enough. It is, it's a connection. No, you're a bit too young for that. <laughs> Wait, when you get to 80, 90 years old, we'll talk about it. But when a person wants to connect, a connection is called a zivug. Now I'm going to tell you one halakha from Abadi Yosef. Now, really, I brought you, I was going to say three, but I'm going to only do one with you. First halakha I was going to tell you was, uh, what's the halakha of Abadi Yosef says? Can you send your kid to a mixed school? Boys and girls together. What's the gather of tzniyut in that? Okay? This one, I'm, t- I'm telling you now what I say. Oh, what the says. From the, that's why, see, I brought, I didn't, you see, I, was, I wrote this in my notes. I didn't even bring my notes. From the book, I was going to read it. Why? There was so much fire and brimstone over here that I said, listen, you guys are not going to believe. You're going to think I'm making stuff up over here. So I said, I'm going to bring the actual center, but I'm going to skip this one. For a different time. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. What's the halakha? Says Rabbi No. Now Rabbi Yosef, we all know he was gedol hador. You agree? Yes or no? You just came from Eretz Yisrael. You agree? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. My son was born on his yard side. You know that. Gimel Cheshvan. Yeah. Rabbi No. Rabbi Yosef is one of the know Rabbi Benzion Mutzaf. He said that he heard from his father that he was Nitzot Mashiach Ben Yosef of his generation. That's how kind of Gdol Hadori it was. And for sure, his, his mastery in Halakha, which is Etz Tov, was unparalleled. Nobody could equal his mastery in Halakha, nobody. He was a Halachic, he knew how to just take out the Halakha. I mean, every time you read Yabiya Omer, it's just a Ta'alim. It's been so long since I opened up Yabiya Omer and learned it inside, it was just, I couldn't let go of the Sefer, Siman after Siman. I was reading Simanim that I didn't even have to know. Just a Ta'anug. He writes like this. Somebody asked, this is already towards the end of his life. This is Chelek uh, Yud. He only had 11 volumes. This is the 10th volume. The 11th volume was posted, uh, was uh, uh, printed, uh, Abraham, after his death. How do you call it? Post, you mostly? Huh? How do you say this? Post, post? Post, post? Posthumously? Alright. 
It says like this. What's the halakha? I was gonna read you the one that's not the mixed boys and girls, but I ended up closing the one that I wanted to do and ended up with this one. I guess Hashem wanted it. Okay. What's the halakha? He writes to Avadi Yosef. This is the year 1985. He's writing to him. 1985. 23rd of Tevet. From the rabbi called Rabbi Yisrael Akoi. What the halachai he writes, if I have a job in the education ministry, in the education ministry, and in the education ministry I am in charge of classes in the public school, Jewish public school, and there are boys and girls learning together. Can I say that since it's because it's a mamlachti dati, religious public school, it's okay, boys and girls are together, or do I have to make a balagan out of it? This was the question. Rav Avadia Yosef. I'm repeating you to Rav Avadia Yosef says, don't send me any letters, send it to Rav Avadia Yosef. Alright, he's buried in Sanhedria, you can send it, you can send it not to me, I didn't write the tshuva. I agree, obviously, who am I, but don't ask me any questions. He writes like this. The Gemara in Masechet Sukkah says in page 52, when Mashiach ben Yosef will die in Gogu Magog, Am Yisrael will sit down and cry family by family. They will do a hesped, eulogy. And the men will cry separately, and the women will cry separately. Says Rashi, Mashiach ben Yosef. This is the prophecy on the Messiah, the son of Joseph. That he will die by Milchemet Gogu Magog. The Kola Kahal Yifku. And there's a prophecy that the whole Amisal will cry over him. Says Ravavadia, Halo Advarim Kalva Homer. It's a Kalva Homer. In the future, when Mashiach comes, will there be a Yetzahara? No. no. If there will be, it's very little. Kechuta Sahara. The Ain Yetzahara Sholet Bahim. There's no Yetzahara. Still says the Gemara. Ha'anashim levad, the men are separate. Ve'anashim levad, and the women are separate. Kshayetzer hara sholet alehem, but when today in our generation was there yetzer hara that are on, on top of us? Oh, oh, alachat kama ve'kama, they have to be separate. I want to sell to you a sefer charedim. We don't hold like a sefer charedim. We should. If I had the power, I would pass it like the sefer charedim. The sefer charedim says. Any wedding where there's men and women sitting together, wow. you're now allowed to bless certain blessings of Sheva Brachot. Mm -hmm. Which one? Shasimcha bim ono. That there's happiness in his house. Why can't you bless that blessing? Shasimcha bim ono says Sefer Chasidim. Because there's no simcha in front of Hashem when there's here hure avera. When there's thoughts of avera. That's how far the Sefer Chasidim goes. What do you want? The AI right now? What do you want? <laughs> Rabbeinu Meiri B'Kiddushin says, Lo yilmad adam livno umanut ben anashim. You should never teach your kids a job that he has to deal with women. Shelo yeshev afilu lifnei atinokot. That he shouldn't even work with in front of young women. Because of hirhure avera. Mikan anu lemedim says Rav Adel Yosef, Kam matzricha liyot hafrada ben anashim lenashim. How many has to be a separation between men? She eats ram tok fam. The yetzer hara breaks a guy. He can't hold himself. Am I right or wrong? I think we could all agree. We're not passing on ourselves judgment like I said at the beginning of this year. We're just saying the facts. Ela gam ben yeladim ve yeladot. Not only between men and women, also between children, male and female. Don't think just because they're in high school or they're in grade school, there's no yetzer hara. And who should know better? I'm a high school teacher. If I just tell you half of the stories that I hear in a 10th grade class, not only your hair is going to fall out, your beard hair is going to fall out. How is that? Not only your hair is going to fall out, your beard hair is going to fall out. I get afraid from the things I hear in the 10th grade class. I get afraid. Seriously, sometimes I can't teach for like 10 minutes. I have to sit do chua over there. Hatati, avidi, pashati, amasha shamati. To that extent. To that extent. 
וכן כתב, הוא נפנימאי, וכן כתב רבני יהודה בספר חסידים. בספר חסידים. אל תערב בנים ובנות, don't mix boys and girls, פן יחטאו, ויעברו לידי עבירה וזימה, ואל תשמח בתולה במחול עם גבר. And a girl should not be sameach with a boy b'machol, even in a circle, because of hiru rea vera. And says Rav Ovadia Yosef something crazy. Remember the story of Ruth? Ember and the Ruth and Shavuot, I told you how she was tsnua, how she bent down, she didn't take. And then when her mother-in-law told her, go down to the thing where your Shabbat called, she didn't listen to her, she only wore it. When she got there, so people shouldn't say, uh, I don't want to say he's going down there. Mm-hmm. Still, she made a mistake. Why? When she was collecting the wheat, says our Ovadia, he's quoting the uh, Rishonim. Boaz told her, don't go to any field. Stick with my girls. What did she tell her mother-in-law? He told me to stick to the, okay. to the boys, he said. Boys. And what did her mother-in-law tell her back? No, he said... The girls, Beruach HaKodesh. Because even a Goy, no matter how tzaddik he is, still some lachluchit, some nadzniut is stuck inside the DNA. You can't, you can't break it. You know the halacha is, if you see a ger, even after 10 generations, you can't make fun of Goyim in front of him. If a ger converts, you can't make fun of non-Jews in front of him. Because still some part of him is connected. He cannot, he, he has to feel, he has to feel some connection. That's how deep it goes, the connection. He root, the, grand, the great-grandmother of David HaMelech, says Rabbi Novaya Yosef, Ubazeh katab Rambam. Rambam, he was a realist. If you could call him liberal amongst the Chachamim, Has Shalom, but let's say, He's more philosopher, this, that, yes. His statue is in Washington, D.C. It's in Barcelona. It's in uh, Cordova. It's in Cairo, too. There you go. I didn't know that one. Says the Rambam, Chayavim kol adam, kol bedin. Every bedin is obligated. Bechol yom tov. And every holiday, la sim shotrim. They have to appoint special policemen. שהבנים והבנות לא יוכלו וישתו ביחד. Who said this? The Rambam. More than this you want, Bitsniut? I'm not talking about women, how they dress. This, by the way, the one I closed was really, the, that, was the, that was the tough stuff over here. This is the, the simple stuff. And says over here, oh, hey, Yosef, even if the yeshiva is a religious yeshiva, but it's mixed. Chas v'shalom nishloach yeladecha b'makom azeh. He says like this. Chas v'shalom. I'm not saying names. We don't say names or anything. You have to think to yourself. What are you putting into the subconscious of your kids? That it's okay? That it's not okay? That there's a getter but it's new? What's the, kab- what's the spiritual difference that you're giving to the children? I want to ask you, what did the Sota do already in the parasha? What did she do, the Sota? What did she do? She thought. She just thought of being with another guy. And her husband already got Ruach Kina. Jealousy. Even she was alone with him. And he got the Ruach Kina. What did she do? And Kina Bezmaneno? There's no Kina? I'm not going to finish what Avadi Yosef says because those guys who don't keep what he says is going to get scared tonight. And he's speaking over here like a, like a review daftaye. Mentioning review daftaye, I'm going to tell you a vision of review daftaye. <laughs> you guys know that I recently got a book thanks to a friend of mine over here that got me the private uh, uh, journal of review daftaye. I'll be honest with you, since Friday, I haven't put this book down. I didn't pick up a Gemara. I only practiced the Sefer Torah for 30 minutes because I had to. And a Sidur. This book has literally not left my... I, I can't stop reading the book. <laughs> His personal... Now, you guys know that Minhat Yehuda, the Rabbi Daftai, is, is probably my favorite Sefer. This book is higher than Minhat Yehuda. 
Okay, that's how strong it is, and it's just is me. It's called Megillat Starim, his his his, prior, his personal journal. So he writes over there. I'll be waiting for the picture. Huh? I sent you the the thing, the the, the first page. You want the, oh, you want the whole book? All right. Well, the, picture, the picture. Okay. Who we talked about? Oh, the picture. Okay. <laughs> so he writes over there. He says he he passed away in 1942. You guys know 1942. Yes. That's exactly when Rommel. So he writes a general Rommel of Hitler. He was Armilus. Armilus Harasha. He could have been. He could have been Armilus. He could have been. But lo, but he passed away right before Armilus, uh, Romulus uh, Rommel got killed. So it didn't end up what he wanted. So he writes over there that he was in the time in Hebron. And right at that time, the Mufti of Jerusalem, the Arabs. You guys know when God came to the world, he said, guys, you guys want the Torah? First he went to Esav. What did Esav say? Listen, we need to kill. It's just in us. We need to slaughter. And Malaso. Then he went to the Muslims. What did they say? We eat the chimichangas. We love the chimmy. You understand? And what's the proof? When they go to the next world, quote unquote, what's waiting for them? 70 chimichangas. All right? That's what they say. That's what they want. Okay, that's their gun aided. 70 of them. Why 70? Every nation of the world. There's 70 nations. They want one from every nation. All right? Hopefully this is not my greatest thing. <laughs> so, Rabbi Naftai saw in the vision what ends up with the Muslims, with the with these Arabim who kill Am Yisrael, and they say, what's waiting for them, Ba'ulam Abba? 70? Betulot. I'm telling you, Rabbi Naftai saw in Gehenum what's waiting for these people, these jihadists. Worse. <laughs> I'm telling you what review the Taya so. Don't make light of it. When they die, these these uh, Arabim, they get to Olama Elion. And as they want, a woman is waiting for them. What? Just said one. From the seventy Yes. And he sees how their lahut when they see the to do the bia. To do the, the act, the chimney, quote unquote. But when they go in, they can't come out. They're trapped. And it's such a trap that their ever, your beautiful gets shriveled and destroyed. And they're yelling, We want out! A doctor comes, a malach, and feeds them. He says, You guys want 70? Now you're gonna get 70. Continue. Continue now. He gives them, and again, they're Yasod. And again, they bring him another one. And like this, they go 70 times. 70 times. But they said they want 70. But the drop of a Jewish blood, each drop is 70. So for every drop, oh it's 70. Oh, wow. Don't say, oh my God. You understand? Bazooka. Every drop. He wanted 70. We're going to give him 70 times 70. And that's when he saw what happens. You whatever. So what do we learn from here? Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Don't always think what you wish for is the best thing. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. Amen.